to naming straight line graphs. Now, just before we start today, I just want to remind you that there is a notes jotter available for this video. You just check the description below, you'll see a download link so you can work along with me as we go along the through the video. Okay, so the first thing we've been asked to do is to calculate the gradient of each of these lines. Now, if you've seen the previous video on drawing straight line graphs, uh, you'll have been introduced to the term gradient. Um, but if not, I'll just give you a quick introduction. Um, basically, a gradient is a calculation about a line. It's a rate of change. Um, and so the gradient is calculated using the formula change in y divided by change in x. Now, what that means is how far has the line moved in the y direction, up and down, um, uh, uh, divided by how far has the line moved in the x direction, left and right. Sometimes this is uh, summarised uh, with the phrase rise over run, uh, basically meaning how far has the line gone up by how far along has it moved. Um, but even more so, a slightly easier version of this may be, in a lot of cases, just to look for every one along going to the right, how far has the line moved up. This will calculate the gradient for us in each case. So let's have a look at the four lines we've got and let's see if we can use these three, um, three versions here. So in the first line, we have a red line um, and we are going to try and find the gradient. So the first thing we want to do is choose a point along this line where we can see definitely um, the corner of a square. So in this case, we're actually very lucky because the two ends of the line are both right on the corner of a square. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a triangle, joining together those points. And what we're looking for is the change in y to begin with. The change in y is how far has the line moved up. And so if we look, we've got five squares. The change in x is how far has it moved along and so one two three four five as well and so if i want to find the gradient then i need to divide the change in y by the change in x i need to do five divided by five now in this case five divided by five is one and so the gradient of that line is one now, if we have a look at this little phrase at the bottom, for every one up there, one along, how far up? Well, one along, one up, one along, one up, one along, one up, and so on. We'll do the same with the green line. We can choose any points on this line as long as they are right on the corner of a square, just to make it easy for ourselves. So let's choose this one right at the bottom, and then we can go right here. We could go to the one at the very top of the line as well. We could use this one. They will all work and all give us the same value at the end. I'll draw the triangle in again. There it is. And then we'll mark on how far it has changed in the y direction, the rise. One, two, three, four squares. Going along, one, two. And so our gradient is going to be the change in y, which is four, over the change in x, which is two, which gives us an answer of two. The gradient is two. Taking us back to this, for every one along, how far up? One along, two up. One along, two up. One along, and two up. When we go to the uh, blue line, we now need to have a quick look and we need to try and find, once again, two points on the line where it is hitting the corner of the square. Well, that is going to be the starting point of the line, but then the only time we will see a point right on the corner of the square is here. So those are the two points we're going to have to use in this case. And again, we'll draw in that triangle. We'll begin with the change in Y. Well, in Y, we've only gone one space up. Along, we have gone four. And so in this case, our gradient comes from the change in Y, which is one, divided by the change in X, which is four. And we have our gradient. We can't simplify this fraction at all, and so that is the gradient, one quarter. And again, what we're looking for here is if we take this very last phrase for everyone along how far up, 
Well, one along, it goes up a quarter of a square. One along, up a quarter of a square. One along, up a quarter of a square. Along one, up a quarter of a square. So gradients can be fractions as well, and that is absolutely fine. In the last one, we've got a purple line here. And again, all I want to do is find any two points on this line where it crosses through the corner of a square. So let's take the very first one and the very last one, because it works this time, and we'll draw our triangle. Now, you may notice there is a slight difference between the first three lines and this one. The first three all went up, and so we have the word rise here. They're all increasing. Whereas this one, if we read from left to right, it actually goes down. Now that's personally why I don't particularly like the phrase rise over run, um, because it does suggest that the lines always have to go upwards. Um, in this case, it's decreasing, it's going down. But what that does is it has an effect on the change in Y. In this case, the change in Y is one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's six down. And so because it's going down, the change is actually negative, it's negative six. The change in x is still positive because it's still moving to the right. And so that one has a value of three. So our gradient here is negative six over three, which equals negative two. And again, that is absolutely fine. A negative gradient means that the line is going downwards rather than going upwards. Okay, so the next thing we've been asked to do is again to calculate the gradient of each of the lines. Now, the change here is that we are now dealing with a set of axes. We have our x-axis and our y-axis um, on the uh, in the image, and therefore we're now dealing with actually reading the scales as well. So we're going to do it in the order of the blue line, then the red line, then the green line. And so with the blue line, if I want to find the gradient, the process is still the same as how we did um, on the previous page. We want to find a point on the line where it goes through the corner of a square. There we go, um, at 4, 2, it is hitting the corner of a square. And if I find somewhere else that is doing exactly the same, we've got this point here, 7, 8. I will draw in a, a triangle just like we did previously. Draw in the triangle and we've got enough information now to find our gradient because our change in y if we look at the y-axis i've moved up one two three four five six spaces and going across i've moved three and so my gradient for the blue line is going to be six over three and so if we cancel that down we get an answer of two for the red line we're going to choose any two points on this line um, where it is hitting the corner of a square. The very first point is actually a good starting point, and we might go with this point here um, at negative 2, 2. Again, if we draw in our triangle, the first thing I want to look at is what is the change in y. Well, in this case, it's going 1, 2, 3, 4 places up. And going across in the x direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so, this time, my, chain, uh, my gradient is change in y, 4, divided by change in x, 8. 4 over 8, if we simplify that, well, both of them can be divided by 4, so it gives us a half. We have a gradient of a half. For every one space to the right, we go up half a square. And finally, the green line. We need to choose, once again, any point on the line which is going through the corner of a square. There is one at 3, negative 3. There's another one at 9, negative 9. Let's draw in our triangle. And if we look at that... Um, this time, we must notice that this line is actually going down, so our change in y is negative. It's a decrease of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And our change in x, well, that is positive because it's still moving to the right, a value of 6. And so our gradient, negative 6 over 6, well, they cancel each other out, dividing by 6, we actually get an answer of 
negative 1. So the gradient of our green line would be negative 1. Okay, so now we get to the main element of uh, this topic. It's actually calculating the equation of each of these lines. Now, if you have seen the previous video on drawing straight line graphs, well, you'll know you are often given an equation and asked to draw the graph of it. In this case, we're going the other direction. We've been given the graph and we need to find the equation of the line from it. And it all comes down to this really important equation here, y equals mx plus c. This is the general format of all straight line graphs. So if your graph is a straight line, then it will be in the form of y equals mx plus c. And we have two very important elements in here. We have an m and we have a c. The letter m is actually, in this case, the gradient. So M is the gradient of the line. And so we've just been working out gradients. And so that value will just go in front of the letter X in the equation. Now C, slightly different. C is known as the Y intercept. And the Y intercept is uh, it comes from this word here, intercept meaning to cross. So we are looking at where does the line cross the y axis. And so those two features are able, uh, able to be used in order to name a graph, as long as you can calculate the gradient and you can spot on the graph where it is crossing the y axis. So we're going to look at the three lines we've just done in the previous, um, previous examples. The blue line we worked out that the gradient was 2. So straight away, that is telling me that my graph must be y equals 2x, because the gradient is the letter m in front of x. Gradient of 2, 2x. Now, the y-intercept. All we need to do is have a look at the y-axis and find where that line crosses. And here it is. It's crossing at negative 6. And so the first thing we can write down is a negative 6. We've named the line and that is all we need to do. Find the gradient, find the intercept. For the red line, we already calculated that the gradient was a half. And so we know that y equals a half x. Again, the gradient is always the number in front of the x. And now we just need to find where it crosses the y-axis. It's very important here that we're uh, looking at the y-axis and we want to find where the red line crosses and it is here at positive three. And so our y-intercept is plus three. The equation of the red line is y equals a half x plus three. Finally, the green line. If we look at the green line, we already know that the gradient is negative one. Now, that tells me that the value in front of the x should be negative one. But this being algebra, we don't generally use the number one. Um, if we have one of anything, we just use the letter. So we're just gonna call this negative x. And then what we need to do is have a look for the y-intercept. Where does this green line cross the y-axis? Well, it actually crosses right here at the origin. And so that is the value of zero. Now, we could write here plus zero, as that is the y-intercept. But adding zero makes no difference to anything. And therefore, we are just gonna call this y equals negative x. Okay, so now we come to the exam question. And this is from the Edexcel paper in June 2018. And it was actually on the foundation and higher paper um, this, uh, in this year, um, because this is what is known as a crossover topic, something which is uh, on both the foundation and higher GCSE. Um, now this is going to put together all of the skills that we've, uh, we've seen so far. We are trying to find an equation for the line shown in the diagram. And so we know that this must be in the form y equals mx plus c. And so we, uh, knowing that, we know we need two different values. We need 
the gradient and the y-intercept. So let's begin with the gradient and we'll find two points on the line which are right on the corner of a square. We've got one here and we've got one here. So let's draw in our triangle as we have done previously. And we're just going to mark how far we have changed in the y direction. So in the y direction, one, two, three, four, five, six. In the x direction, two. So the gradient must be six over two. Six divided by two is three. And so we now know that our equation is going to be y equals three x. The plus c is our y-intercept. Where is this line crossing the y-axis? Well, it's actually a point that we've already marked. Here's our y-axis and here's where our line is crossing. It's at negative 6. And so the intercept is negative 6. And so our equation ends with negative 6. This line has the equation y equals 3x take away 6.